So about six months ago, uh, this garage was flooded. I had two feet of water in here. And unfortunately, my uh, compressor that I had didn't make it. So I was out of a compressor for a while. I just recently purchased this uh, DeWalt 30 gallon uh, compressor at Tractor Supplies. So I did not pay this price. I paid less than that. You know, out the door, and I think it was about $500. Um, so there were a couple of things that I saw online with this, you know, YouTube and all that. Is that some people have bought the same compressor and they've done some modification on it. And that's where I'm at with this now. Um, I am basically now installing a I already did it a what they call a water separator I used the bolt from here it's, it's got a nut holding this plate that I made um, and that's this stuff I bought at Home Depot uh, inch and a quarter 48 inches long pretty expensive stuff I have to say but I am gonna make some use out of it I also modified the air, the intake air on this so this uh, compressor came, and I got a mess here because I'm still working on it. Uh, let's see if I can show you what it came with. It came with these little ones. And they're, to me, I think, for the most part, they're, they weren't good. I mean, this by far takes in a lot more air. So when you open these, this only has this little tiny filter. And the intake of this thing is, is super small. I don't know why you will put something like this on a, on a two-piston compressor. It goes beyond me. But anyway, this one, the intake is through here. On the other one, the intake is it's a, little, a little port. But the bottom line is it, it, it's not taking the same full amount of air that's coming through these. Also, what's nice about these is like, look at this filter. I mean, that's, this is a really good filter unit. And that's what the inside looks like. Um, so it's definitely a, an upgrade. The other thing I noticed when I um, tried them out, it's still a little, a little loose that uh, it muffled a lot of the, the sound, so it wasn't as loud. Anyway, the other thing I want to do with this is uh, in here, yeah, let me grab this out of here, out of this holder here. All right. So in here, I'm looking to put an hour meter on it. And the reason why I want to do that is because every hundred hours, I want to change out the uh, the oil. So this is what I want installed. Now, I think I'm going to create a bracket and mount it right behind this uh, regulator uh, switch here. The other thing too that I modified on this compressor, which I didn't understand why they did it, was they put this um, this meter that measures the uh, the pounds in here, and it was mounted sideways. You didn't have it looking this way. If you want to look at it, you had to turn this way. So I changed that up. I put a brass elbow in it and I stood it upright so where I can I can see both meters with eye level. I don't have to turn my head. Uh, the other thing too now is this uh, water separator. So I need to bring uh, a line from here down here. And that should be easy. Just I'm using this, um, this copper pipe. I got a roll of it over there, so. And then I gotta bring a line up this way right into the tank 
right in here. Oh, and by the way, the cord I'm using on this is something I bought in Home Depot. It's called a Husky, you know, tool replacement cord. Uh, what's nice about it, it, it doesn't bring three wires, which is good because the switch I'm going to put in there, it, it it only runs with, you know, with the uh, positive and a negative wire. It does not have a ground. So, and unfortunately, that's the way it's going to go. And all it's, all it's doing is basically reading the, the electrical current on when this compressor is running. And it just kind of does a clock down on it. Anyway, moving on to the next here. I have to start taking measurements on how I'm going to go about putting the coppers on this. And um, I have a bender. I'm going to tell you I'm not, I am no pro at doing this kind of stuff. This is all new to me. But, you know, you learn by your mistakes. Anyway, uh, stay tuned. Okay, so I have to make a physical connection from here to here and I gotta cut this pipe before I move on to the um, the return to the tank okay so I ran into a snag and the snag is uh, these elbows that I'm using to run the copper pipe from this point to this point they don't fit they don't fit on the male part of it where I collar it and that's not gonna work I didn't realize that when you get compression fittings, you want to make sure that it has at least the indentation where the pipe sits inside of it. And this way you can properly compress it. So um, I'm going to have to take these things off and then put these on so I can compress this tubing from the mo motor into this reservoir. All right, so... <clears throat> This has turned out to be more than just a project for me here. So my connection here, I did not have a way of singeing this pipe inside the compression. The pieces that I bought, it wouldn't allow to, me to do that. It just basically sat on top. And unfortunately, the 90 degree elbow you need to have something threaded in there so i went to ace and i got a it's called a quarter inch three eighth and a quarter inch meaning that is a three eighth opening here and a quarter inch diameter here on the bottom and that works perfect for what i'm doing here so basically you have a a copper sleeve which is going to compress the the copper and this actually is going to sit inside if you can see that it sits inside which is what I was trying to achieve as a goal here so this is on already so the next thing now is I got to run a pipe which I already kind of been messing around with and get it across to the other side and then we're going to turn this on and see if it works Okay, so forgive the noise. Um, I basically, what I did was I ran a copper line into the inlet of the separator, water separator, and then the out. I ran all the way across and into the tank's uh, pressure valve. Now I do have a small leak of air here when it's pumping, but it's not enough to affect filling the tank. And after the tank is filled, it's, quite honestly, nothing is seeping out of the line. So, um, and it looks like this thing is working. I don't want to grab it because it's hot. Let's see if I can pull this off. Yep, there's water in there, but I, I, I tell you, it evaporates really quick. This thing gets really, really hot. So I did this install. It's a water separator. Um, 
and it's not quite working the way it should. And the reason why is because this thing is creating so much temperature that it's heating up this filter and the water is evaporating from there and going back into the tank. So the goal here for me is to take this line out and put this small radiator in front of the, the fan and see if I can cool that air down from preventing this filter uh, getting okay, hot. So the goal here is to mount this on the fence of the compressor. I'm gonna use these anchors and the way I'm gonna go about it is I'm gonna go right into the slot of this little hole here and get it through the fence um, and then lock it on the opposite side. Now I will use these pads I'll put the pads on the opposite side because it's going to be laying, laying against that fence. So you don't want metal, metal shimming on that fence. The, the noise will drive you nuts. So there's something that's going on with that that I have to repair, but it's an easy fix. So getting back to these pads, I'm going to put this on it and then lock it with this. And in the meantime, I'm going to try to work with how I'm going to bring this line into this piece here and out of this piece so i got a couple of ways of doing it but i have to look i'm definitely gonna have to bend some pipes but um we'll see how it goes i put the rubber cushions underneath i suggest you cut these in half if you're using this radiator um now i just got to figure out position and start working with that I got the pull throughs in and they're cut exactly identical. There's a way that you can release these if you have to do any kind of movement on this. Um, but anyway, uh, you can cut them evenly by measuring out with the one that you cut so this way you get them all equal. Leave a little bit so this way you can remove them down the future if you need to. I had a hell of a time bending pipe. I'm not good at do it, doing that. But I have to say that uh, temperature going back into the tank is basically room. I mean, the filter is 89 and I can actually touch this. I won't touch that because that is super hot. But um, I actually achieved the goal here by putting that radiator on the, on the front here. That's my setup. I gave it a pitch so that all moisture will roll down into the can, into the separator. Um, and quite honestly, that separator now, I can, I can actually touch it. I couldn't touch it back then the way I had it set up. So I'm, I'm really pleased on how this all came out. Uh, I also added on this three fans to cool the radiator. Uh, basically, because it's, it's, Florida is very humid, um, I am getting a little bit of water in, in, the, in the tank. And so, in order to get that air much cooler when it's being compressed, I added the fans to circulate that air right through that, um, that radiator. I also made something here in order to mount my fans. I used this... Um, 18 gauge uh, grill and I cut it I cut it according to size with my shears and made this okay my fans are mounted on there and basically what I did was I I measured the radiator that was going to be underneath it and this is just a, a protection but also allows me to mount my fans and then I bought the edging strips to cover up the sharp end of the uh, of the grill and then painted it black so it matches with the pre-assisting one that this compressor has. You can pick this up at Home Depot costs you probably about $13 it's a big sheet but it works well and the separator works perfect. Whoa the water that it just came out of this filter and that's before it went into my tank. Um, it really does collect quite a bit of water and contaminants. And what I'm basically getting down below is uh, clean, dry air. 
I cut this inch and a, inch and a half piece of aluminum and kind of measured the center of where I needed to do my cutout. And then underneath, there's actually a bracket that holds these wires. I actually cut this out. What I can do now is kind of show you real quick uh, what I did here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Basically what I did was I did a, a cutout on the metal aluminum plate so that I can screw down the bracket that holds the wire. That same bracket as, um, acts as my holder for my mount. But bottom line is that uh, I didn't want to use uh, zip tie. I saw some guy on YouTube using zip ties for these, this meter that he applied in and um, I did not want to do that. So basically what I did was this mounts right there in the back and then getting this into the light so you can get an idea. So this is my setup and I drilled the back side of this thing to mount my bracket and I I'm, it looks a little off center but that doesn't matter because I can still put my screw in um, and this is basically gonna hold my hour meter I, uh, the wires that I'm gonna use here is gonna be my husky and I already have it all set up you can buy this at Home Depot and basically I'm just gonna cut enough of this so that I can mount it from behind the um, the uh, hour meter and I have I can come in through the underside of this because there's enough gap or just come right off to the side of this and where I need to do my connection has to be in here on the bottom the black and my white which is my hot lead and my negative and the way that's going to work is that every time this motor cycles it's going to kick on power on here and it's going to power the hour meter and it's going to give me a countdown of how many hours this run supposedly <clears throat> after a hundred hours of this compressor running um, I have to change the uh, are crimpers that are like this I can't tell you how much I hate crimpers like this this is complete garbage you want a really good crimper go to Harbor Freight and buy one of these the, this thing wiring that I'm showed before in the video because it's kind of on the far distance um, but what I want to explain to you here is that this is a crimper that I got at Harbor Freight and what I like about it is that it comes in three sizes of colors for the connectors that you're going to put on a wire and basically what you do is you put your wire in the back and you go right into the slot of this thing and it ratchets down and so it's, what's neat about it is that it'll, it'll give you a professional crimp on it so you have a, a red a blue and a yellow for the connectors and that's according to the size the release of this is down here you know it's to release the ratchet it's, you got to push the lever and then so your ratchet is released um, and the goal here is to uh, do the wires for the uh, the hour, hour clock so and I already did it you can see here that you know the wires have been crimped and all all right so this is working and this is how it's all wired up so um, I'm not gonna reach down there because this power is still in there so let me unplug this all right so I had a one starting with, um, let's see if I can focus this, 
Probably not. But anyway, I had a, a one, and now I'm on a two. Slow. It takes takes quite a bit for it to move. But what I did was I wired the um, the meter to the motor, so the white to the white, and the black to the black. Now, mind you. You guys do this on your own description. I suggest that you learn a little bit of electricity or have some knowledge. If you're not sure, then get someone to do it. And that's my disclosure as far as electrical goes. And now basically uh, I just need to put all this together and we're done.